part 2 of Visual Studio Tips tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to find the containing namespace of a class. Sometimes we know the name of the class that we want to use, but we don't remember the name of the namespace to which the class belongs. In Visual Studio, it's easy enough to find the namespace to which a class belongs. Simply type the name of the class and then use control dot keystrokes. Let's understand this with an example. Here I have a new console application and let's say within the main method we want to use SQL connection class. In general, we use SQL connection class to establish a connection to SQL Server. Now, since we don't know the namespace to which the SQL connection class belongs and that being the reason we are not using the required using declaration right here and because of that we have a compilation error. And what is the compilation error saying? The type or namespace name SQL connection could not be found. Are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? So how do we resolve this? Now one way is when I move the cursor here, look at underneath the letter S, you have a blue rectangle and if you hover the mouse over that, you have options. So the first option here is telling, okay, this SQL connection class belong to system.data.sql client namespace and when you use this option, it's going to automatically pop in that using declaration at the top of the file. Look at that using system.data.sql client and we have the compilation error gone. That's one way. Let's look at the other options. So to get that menu, you can either hover the mouse over that blue rectangle or if you like using keyboard, simply press control dot and, and you'll be present with the same menu. So if you select this second option, what is it going to do? It is going to fully qualify the name of the class. So basically, SQL connection class belong to system.data.sql client namespace. So when I select this, it's going to use that fully qualified name. Let's look at the other options that we have. So we also have an option to generate a class. So when we select this option, what is it going to do? It is going to generate a new class with the name SQL Connection. So let's select that option and see what's going to happen. Look at that. It has created a file called SQLConnection.cs and within that we have got this class SQL Connection. And within the main method, we are actually using that SQL Connection class. So keep in mind, this is not the .NET Framework SQL Connection class. It is our custom type. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that and let's look at the last option that we have. So press control dot again. So the last option is to generate a new type. So when we select this option, we will be presented with uh, this generate new type dialog box. So here you can generate any type. So do you want to generate a class, a structure, interface or an enum? Now when I select a structure, so it's going to automatically create a structure with that name SQL Connection and it's going to create a new file sqlconnection.cs. So when I click OK, so there will be another file generated and within that we have that structure. So let's go ahead and delete that. So you have those four options basically. So when you press control dot, you know, you will automatically come to know the namespace to which the class belong. But for this feature to work, there are two conditions that we need to meet. The first one is obviously the name of the class is case sensitive, meaning in SQL connection class that's present in system.data.sql client uh, namespace, S and C are capital. Now if I use small letter C instead of capital letter C and then when I press control dot, look at that, it doesn't tell me the namespace to which the class belongs. It only gives me options to generate a class or to generate a new type. Okay, so it has to be the correct casing. And another thing is the assembly to which the class belong must be referenced. So now we know that the SQL connection belong to system.data.sql client namespace and that namespace is present in system.data assembly and that assembly is referenced. Now since that assembly is referenced, we are using the correct casing. Now when I press control dot, I will come to know the namespace to which this class belong. Okay, now if I don't have the reference to this assembly, if we remove that and now when I press control dot, look at that again, it doesn't tell us the namespace to which this class belong. Okay, so for this feature to work, these two conditions must be met. The assembly to which the class belong must be referenced. The name of the class is case sensitive. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.